مساء الخير ارجو نكونوا ما تبقوش تعبانين لان الجلسه دي كلها عشان مساعدتكم انا هتكلم بالانجليزي عشان زملائنا اللي بيساعدونا في هذا المشروع انما انا عايزكم انتوا كلكم تبقوا حاسين ان اللي هنتكلم عنه كله عشانكم مشروع عشان الشباب والباحثين الشباب Uh, so uh, I said that I'm happy to see you late in the evening, good evening, and that this session is about a project that is all designed for them, for young researchers. So we're here to help them. So let me start about the BA super course and the help desk. I hope you know about it, and I hope you use it. Do you know about the, 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 the super course? Yes? No? That's how I want to look at the help desk. I want to tell you about the, uh, we'll start with the super course. The science super course has more than 160,000 PowerPoint lectures that are available for free. You can use an entire lecture, you can design your own lecture, you can download it, you can send it and share it, you can do whatever you like. We started in 2006 at the University of Pittsburgh and it was mirrored at the BA with only 3,700 lectures in epidemiology and preventative medicine. And then we moved on and we said what can be done for medicine can be done for other fields. We already succeeded in having 60,000 teachers use the material from these lectures to teach a million students in over 170 countries. So we're hoping things get better and better for you. So this was the original website of the super course epidemiology, the internet, and global health. And then in BioVision 2008, we launched the idea of expanding that to all science, starting with four areas of science. And uh, Vince Cerf and uh, Ron Laporte, who is not here with us, but who's a close colleague with everybody here, and Gil Oman and myself are the four PIs that are driving this project. And that is the website. Everything is for free. You can use it anytime you want. This is the website, and that is the address, the science super course, ssc.bibalex.org. And we are also working now, not just to give you the chance to use material that has already been prepared by others, but to do your own research. And we have created a help desk, about which I will speak in a moment and my colleagues will be addressing, which can help you all prepare your own research in order to publish your own papers. But let us start first with a quick overview of the super course. So this is how you access the super course, ssc.bibalex.org. That is the entrance website. And uh, it's, as I said, an online repository of thousands of lectures for free. It's about 170,000 lectures and growing right now. Public health, we have more than 44,000 lectures. Computer engineering, 51,000. Agriculture, 78,000. And environment, 26,000. And many of them, uh, of course, cover some bridges as well. We received 14 million hits on the super course last year. <laughs> I hope you will use it even more yourselves. And the number of user access in, in thousands is going up in terms of increased user visits. As I mentioned 60,000 teachers, actually now we're reaching 300 and some 30,000 lectures, uh, users. Now they're obtained and classified on standard classifications. For example, for computer engineering, we follow the ACM, the Association of Computer Machinery, 
classification, which is artificial intelligence, computer applications, etc., etc. These are the classifications, and the twin parentheses are the number of lectures in each subcategory that are available. And then uh, you could go in and click on one of them, like pattern recognition, and you get the uh, uh, thing you see on the left. You can open it here. Pattern recognition has further subcategories. Subcategories here are applications, clustering, design methodology. And if you go to one of these, like clustering, you'll find further subcategories. Algorithms, similarity measures, and so on. If you go to algorithms, for example, you will get these lectures. And here you can go on and find data mining for security applications, for example. And you get the actual lecture in front of you, typical PowerPoint lecture which you can use. You can save it as a PowerPoint lecture or mail it to a friend as you wish. Just click on this button and save it on your computer or you can send it to a friend if you want. But we have added a lot of additional functionalities that will help you all in your work. So let's go, you can go here. This is a lecture in English, but many of them are available in multiple languages. Not many, not 170,000, but uh, Eugene, how many do we have in different languages? Well, you'll tell us when, when your turn comes. But we have a number in other languages as well. So if you click on, on the issue here, you'll find Arabic, Japanese, Russian, etc. So if you go to Arabic, this particular one is translated into Arabic as well. And you get into the slides, for example, and here you want to look for and search for something, in this case, interactive segmentation. And now, this is extremely useful. It will find the word interactive segmentation, whether it appeared in the slide itself or in the comments on the slide, the notes on the slide. So it will flag for you every slide in that presentation where the word interactive segmentation, either segment or interactive or segmentation, has appeared. And it will show you here the results, and you can go straight to the slide that's close to you, and you can find the slides that cover the material you want. Now, you can zoom in, and you can get something else. For example, let us look for the word. You can do a search, an advanced search, for benign tumors. Now here, first we're searching inside the same lecture. But now if we go to this big search, you will find a number of lectures coming up. And you can go to this one, for example, and you will find benign tumors are mentioned here. And it's the Pathology Review Flashcards lecture. And you will see where they are available here. Even when there is, it's not in the notes, if it appears in the text on the slide, it will flag the slide for you. Isn't that useful? When you have 170,000 lectures, you narrow it down by subject, you go into the subject you want, find you want something very special, write in the word you want, and I'll tell you here, it's in this lecture, in these slides. Then you can go on and say, now, if you go back to the major website, it will tell you, the moment you open the website, it will tell you these are the recently added lectures, these are the most viewed, and these are the top rated. Rated by whom? By you. Users. You like them? Say you like them. So other users will look at them. Now, we also have something called the legacy lectures. These are the best of the best or the most important of them. And here we have uh, for example, in the Golden Lectures, this is a lecture in 1992 given by James Van Allen on the modern saga of planetary exploration. This is uh, the Nobel Lectures, Kenneth Wilson, for example, on the origins of lattice gauge theory. Uh, so we have letter, uh, le lectures by Nobel laureates, by very distinguished scientists who have passed away uh, because we started a discussion with Ron and uh, and the Gill and saying, for example, can you imagine walking into the Library of Alexandria 
and saying, I wish I could hear a lecture by Albert Einstein. And then you turn it on and there would be a lecture for Albert Einstein. Well, we don't have lectures for Albert Einstein in PowerPoint or video, but we do have for some of the top scientists today. And some of them have passed away. And, uh, but they have given us the rights to their materials before they passed away. And so we're building a legacy and 10 years from now, Many of these distinguished people, like 1992 and, and uh, 2000 and so on, will be able to go back and see these incredible lectures by incredible scientists. But also, our colleagues here, and uh, with Ali Erdalan and others as well, have uh, Faina, Linkov, and so on, have created lectures in PowerPoint about things that are immediate like the nuclear disaster in Japan, like mudslides, like the impact of the pandemic of influenza, H1N1. Why PowerPoint lectures? Well, because the information is summarized and very quick, rather than asking someone to go and read five or six articles or 10 articles. Here's the top information presented in a very easy fashion, and you can run through the slides in a matter of minutes and get all the top information, the latest information, by the top scientists. These were called the, the JIT or the just-in-time lectures. Now, in addition to all of that, you have here your own little special library. So this is my profile, my favorites, my uploaded lectures, my library, my bookmarks, my baskets. This particular case is my colleague Maria Nagy, the person in question, but uh, uh, you can have your own as well. You just register and put up your own thing. What do you get for that? Well, if you look at the lecture and you like, for example, Klaus Amann's lecture here, you can add this lecture to my library, and it will go here in my library and be available for you. But you can bookmark individual slides. Mark them up so that when you go back into the material, you just go immediately to the slides that you want to use and that is my bookmarks. You found it on iPad, you use it on similar bookmarking system everywhere. And we can have entire groups of slides that you like, not the whole lecture, just two or three that I want, and I want to put them in my basket, and I may use them as I prepare something else for myself. And you can also add these slides to your basket, and it will go like that into my basket here. And when you go open your basket, you'll find all the slides that you went in. You go to Amazon, your wish list or your shopping cart, this is your basket. Carrying a basket, you put the slides in it as you go around, take this slide, that slide, put it there, and take it and it stays there. And you want to keep the slides, you can put them in your basket. Once you're in, you can organize your own lecture by moving the slides around and design whatever you want to do in your own presentation. And you can, of course, use these and then add more slides of your own that you will make yourself to complete what you want to do. And then uh, you can either download the slides, remove the slides, save the order, reset the order, all the usual stuff that I just mentioned can be done. I recommend that you use it, that you upload your lectures on the super course. And there's where you upload over here. And then you have added something to the super course in the result of what we were talking about. To share your expertise or your experience or your insights, whichever, with uh, a wider audience. For the science super course is structured on community involvement. It is the community of scientists working in public health, the community of science working in agriculture, in environment, etc., that helped this along. Now, the research community, however, all of you being young researchers, some not so young, but young at heart, like uh, some of us, have serious problems. You'll be happy to know it's not just you who have these problems. In fact, it's a very, very serious problem. And in order to do your own studies, as well as give presentations from lectures, we have created the help desk. The help desk is a concept like when you're stuck in something and you dial a company, I'm having problems using your product, tell me how, what to do, and they will tell you that's a help desk. So we've done a help desk for research. 
all of you doing research. This is a stunning statement that just very recent from The Economist on 15th March 2014 that in The Lancet, a British top British medical journal, that in 2010 about $200 billion, an astonishing 85% of the world's spending on medical research was squandered on studies that were flawed in their design, redundant, never published, or poorly reported. What a waste. Why? Because a lot of people make mistakes in quantitative analysis. In the experimental design, the control features, the type of data to collect, the limitations of the data, the statistical analysis, the, the conclusions you can reach. This is a very serious problem. It's more serious in developing countries, and that is why there are very few papers that are published by distinguished journals. Mr. Yanidis wrote a paper five years ago called Why Most of Science is False, and he's saying there are errors in the design, and that has now developed into a special institute on meta-studies that has been launched in Stanford. Uh, in fact, it was launched in Stanford last year, and Yanidis is the head of it, and they are looking at the statistical analysis that is reported in all studies. So you might as well learn how to do it right. But where would you go? We'll help you. So, developing countries publish very few papers. We are 80% of the world's population, and we are under 5% of uh, the published papers. And uh, we want to double that number by encouraging young researchers to do better. Why? Because you have little statistical capacity, because in most of our teaching, they are totally separated. The people working on statistics are in one part of the university, and the people working on public health or working on uh, uh, social studies are in another part of the university, and they don't work together. Secondly, we have poor research design and analysis and very limited scientific publications. And we found out, we talked to many of the journals, and 80%, 80% of the rejection of the publications is due to poor research methods. So we are now trying to say, okay, we've given you lots of lectures that you can look at, very interesting, but now we want to help you to produce your own research. And to do that, we are providing a guide to research methods, a help desk, which will allow you, hopefully, to publish soon, publish often, and to get you going in that direction. Now, if you go back to our Science Super Course website that you see here, and you go to this upper right-hand corner, and there is the help desk. You just click on the help desk and you go in, and that's your introduction to the help desk. So we have overviews of the concepts. I'll show you what we have in there. And it says, look, if you're going to be in academic research, you'd better learn how to publish and to publish well. And so don't waste your effort. Don't do a lot of bad studies and then try to fix them. Do them right the first time around. And so we start out by saying one thing is young researchers can ask more experienced researchers like ourselves. And what we do is you are a user. You can access through Facebook or through the website. You ask a question. Then we have a team of coordinators of whom one is here who will speak to you. And they get this information and they either have the immediate answer or they refer it to a group as somebody said initially, of gray-haired people, like these two gray-haired gentlemen, or no-haired people, like, <laughs> like me. See, that's why it's called the gray-haired, no-haired team. <laughs> so the gray-haired, <laughs> some of you would qualify as well, as I see, as both for the gray hair and the no-haired. So you, you qualify there, and these people will give you the advice. They will answer your question. And here are examples of some questions that I've asked. And uh, this one talks about animal bites, dog bites, or petty home dog, important problem. How can I design the study? So he explains how to do a, a double cross design. And there's an answer to these questions. So the first part the help desk provides is that when you're really stuck, if you don't find the information there, you can ask the question. And it will go 
first to the coordinator and then to the best researchers in the world. We have a team of 200 of the best researchers in the world know everything about methods and they will give you advice. Then there's a course that I gave to people here which is uh, videotaped as well that covers quantitative techniques for social science research and that covers most things from measurement and method and uh, building indices and correlation and causality, and probability, statistics, surveys, sampling, experimental and quasi-experimental designs, conceptual models, quantitative models, and a little bit about complexity at the end. But uh, it's a course uh, that uh, I think is available. It has PowerPoints on all the lectures, and you can also get the videos from the YouTube channel as well. Then we have one which is simply 14 common statistical issues. You'd be surprised how frequently your question and this question and her question and this question are all the same. I mean, these are some recurrent themes come up again and again, and there we can see when we face these statistical issues. And then the research methods has also a little super course, not quite 170,000 lectures, but about 1,000 PowerPoint lectures about research design and statistics and so on. And we have also collected well-tested surveys on uh, smoking, health, etc., etc., that are available in multiple languages and that have been already pre-designed and recommended by international organizations like WHO and FAO and others. Now, I'm happy to say we launched this last October, and as you can see, we have had a very quick increase in the number of visitors that are coming to our website, and that's very encouraging. We hope there will be more. And so from the whole super course, or specifically to the help desk, I say to you, please, it's done for you and shall be continued by you so please join us today. Thank you.